And how did you learn back then? Because obviously it's all, it's all changed now, but what were your main learning formats back then? Yeah, you didn't have much back then. It was mostly just playing and then thinking through how you played, seeing like what could you have done differently, learning about your opponents, like seeing something interesting that happened, thinking through it and talking to friends about it as well. Like you know, people, we still had tools, um, which I at some point started using as well, but it was, I mean, very, yeah, very light in comparison to what you have today. Did you, did you have a plan back then? So, you know, now you're involved in reg and that. I, I'm sure it's just not just happening. You, you sit down at some point and you think, right, how are we going to make this work? How can this be most effective? Did you have a plan back then to say, like, like how am I going to be, become a professional poker player? Because I love this game and I want to do it forever or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, did you have a plan back then or what was it? Um, I think it was, no, I definitely didn't have a strict plan. And I think with many things when in, I mean, I don't want to call poker entrepreneurial or strictly at least, mm. but um, often um, it requires just like believing in yourself and just believing that you will figure it out along the way. So I probably aborted university too soon <laughs> and just because I did believe that I will figure it out along the route basically. And uh, a bit of overconfidence seems to be helpful for that, even though it's not necessarily like the most rational thing, but uh, it seems to be that many winning stories are beginning with someone being very overconfident. Um, but that's also in part the case because uh, we don't hear about the losing stories. Like where I am, there is also like three as skilled people who just ran bad at a time when I ran well. But that, that, that in itself is got to be a real positive trait though, right? Not just in poker, but in life, like taking that risk and being that bold? Depends. I'm not sure about that actually. Like um, if for an individual, I think probably not because um, if you try, if you for example start a startup and you have like a 10-15% chance of success, let's say on average, well you're gonna put in a few years into that and you might get absolutely nothing out of it. Even in some of the good cases you still get nothing out of it, depends on how the shares went, etc. So even though like now you have a small chance of winning a lot like your own uh, utility curve is like ebbing out very quickly there's like diminishing returns of having more money right uh, so um, i i'm not sure from an individual perspective it makes sense to take these like very unlikely but high reward things mm -hmm. because the actual reward is not as that much better than the smaller risk medium reward type of scenario if I had a million people and like as a society and like what, what do we want society to do so that um, we get like some amazing companies out then it's better. Like you do, you wouldn't have, um, I don't know, like many, te much technological progress I guess if people weren't taking extreme risks. But for each of those individuals like they, they're probably doing something that's nearly harmful to them. It doesn't seem that way because it's just we never hear about the bad stories.